there is a sport we play in india in which players try and hit an object which is moving very fast with another object they hold in their hand <laughs> okay good guess <laughs> so indians are really good at this sport with many athletes being household names many of whom also endorse very well known brands india has been able to produce great athletes these athletes represent indian national team and also play for a popular domestic league now when i say this the first thing that comes to people's mind is cricket but the sport i am referring to here is badminton the glorious sport of badminton may have certain similarities to cricket but it also has many crucial differences unlike cricket in badminton the women players are arguably more famous than the men <laughs> unlike cricket which was invented in england and wholeheartedly adopted by india badminton was invented in india yes in india and adopted wholeheartedly adopted by the whole world unlike cricket which retains its original name badminton was called by a different name earlier any guesses what badminton was called earlier yeah that's right badminton was called the pune game that takes me to another story badminton was played earlier in the 1800s in india it was invented in india so this glorious sport was first played by a few brit it is believed that a few british officers from the khadki cantonment inserted bird feathers into a wine cork and started tossing it around till then it was called the game of battle doors and shuttle cocks the invention of a net that separated two players and built in an element of competition took place here in pune thus it was called the pune game and later evolved to the sport of badminton today badminton is a global sport played by 150 plus countries it is an highly competitive sport where 150 plus nations compete it is the fastest racket sport in the world where the average speed of the shuttle ranges from 250 kilometers per hour to 400 kilometers per hour at the international levels yeah so this is an image where it was first played in pune moving on india has kept its special association with this sport young and keep going so india has always been a great participant of this sport and in india badminton is the second most played sport after cricket making it highly competitive player stars like pv sindhu saina nehwal chirag shetty and satvik sairaj are household names and in a highly competitive global field badminton is doing very well this year as we celebrate 150 years of the pune game it was thrilling to see india for the first time live the thomas cup my very own story with this sport started relatively late compared to those who start at an young a younger age of 6 or 7 i picked up the racket at the age of 13 in fact my very first trainer told my parents that i was no good and i would never make it to the sport he was of the view that i must pursue some other sport if i wanted to excel thankfully my parents believed in me they enrolled me into a different training center instead their persistence paid off as i started getting better at the age of 16 in 2015 i won my first ever junior championship here in pune 
Later, I also had the privilege of representing India in the World Tour Super Series, which is the highest level of the tournaments that are played across the globe. And I became formerly ranked in the top 140 in the world. From an athlete who was bluntly told that he couldn't play badminton, from an athlete, from a player who was bluntly told he couldn't play, to an athlete who signed autographs in Germany, I believe that badminton has been the fondest gifts of my life. It has also been a great teacher. One of my most memorable days occurred at the age of 18 when I was playing in the All India tournaments. So in the All India tournaments, you have to qualify to make it to the top 32 in the country. 16 out of the 32 are pre-qualified and 16 have to grow through a grueling knockout stage with 1,000 other participants. At this point of time, for any athlete competing in the qualifying rounds and making it to the main draw is almost as tough as winning an actual tournament. The reason why it becomes so difficult and challenging is because as an average athlete, you train for 8 hours for 4 to 5 days in a week. Whereas in a tournament, you have to do everything that you do in those 8 hours in just a span of 20 minutes. The games are super fast, the schedules are super late and at times an athlete plays his match at even 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning. For 30 tournaments, for 4 straight years, I lost in the final round of the qualifying. It had almost become a mental barrier for me and my partner. We would defeat tough opponents in the initial rounds and lose out to even the easiest in the final round. And even though we lost many times, we stayed loyal to each other. And that is what made the whole difference. Ladies and gentlemen, for 30 tournaments, for four straight years, I would call my parents back home. We would call our parents back home and tell them that we final round harlo, which in English means that we lost the final round. On a cold morning in Sikkim, we were to play a match against the second seeds of the tournament. In the opening game, my partner smiled and he said, bro, I am not able to control the shuttle at all. We lost the opening game without any resistance. In the second game, we were 18-13 down. Now for everybody who plays badminton here, 18-13 is almost done and dusted. My friends who were sitting behind me to coach me, got up at 18-13 and left the hall. As they too thought that there was no way ahead for us. But, a long rally took place at 18.13, which changed everything for us. We defended for the next eight points, and we won the second game 21-19. I wouldn't clap because it was too early to clap. <laughs> In the deciding game, we were back to original, and this time, we had showed our talent to the zenith. This time, in the third game, we were 19-12 down. So, <laughs> the whole crowd stood and watched us play because it was the second seeds that who we were playing. So an upset like that happens very rarely. So in this defending game, again somehow, we managed to defend everything that came at us. In the defending game, we won the game in the final, final game with a score of 26-24. It was the first time that I qualified in my whole life. The feeling was beyond words. Me and my partner were in tears on court. 
the whole crowd couldn't believe what they had just seen we saw almost everybody touching their heads in surprise the first lesson that i learned here was that you can lose as many times as you want but the urge to win should always stay i called back home after this game and this time we had to tell our parents that ami final round jinklo which in english means that we won the final round our parents and our siblings were in a complete state of shock <laughs> people confirmed the score ki have they actually won or is there some problem that brings me to another thing one more lesson that i learned here was that the only difference between winning and losing tough games is the belief factor after this game we qualified in every game we played the losses had made us stronger and helped us build a very strong mindset one very important thing about loyal thing about loyalty here was even though we had options to switch partners we never did and today you will be glad to know that my partner stands in the list of one of the best badminton players in the country and is a part of the national team <laughs> what i realized while this all of this was going on was that self growth happens only when you help others grow we both kept pushing each other throughout and that is how both of us developed groomed to be better athletes now not all sports are perfect a lot of badminton players these days do come out and speak about politics or other issues in sports other inequalities in sport i've had my share of disappointments as well despite being amongst the best i was denied a place in one of the local teams fighting organizational decisions is not easy but for all young athletes and people sitting out here i have this one message beat sports or beat other situations in life always believe that there is something else that is meant to be in 2019 when all my friends were a part of a local team i was the only one left out i contemplated on quitting sports I remember sitting in the changing room and crying for hours. I remember deciding not to touch my kid bag for a while. It was precisely then by a strange quirk of fate I had got an opportunity to play my first ever international tournament which was supposed to be held in Dubai. None of my friends made it there. It was only I and my partner who got an opportunity to play there. by god's grace we also got promoted there so we did not have to go through a qualifying round <laughs> i realized one thing beat sports be or beat other situations just believe in the process that year itself i also got an opportunity to become one of the only and few indians to play in germany in the national league there being an athlete representing india at the global stage is not just about playing but moreover it is a responsibility you are a brand ambassador of 1.3 billion people back home and in such a case it is important to be a good athlete but moreover it is good it is better that you are a person of great character and that is the difference between a good athlete and a great athlete so having a per being a person of great character is what separates a good athlete from the best so 
what does the future hold for the Pune game? India is already doing globally well in badminton, but I would like to speak of ways in which we could do even better if certain steps were taken. Number one, a focus on integrity and fair play. With the ever-growing competition at the All India levels and the increasing number of participation, the level of age frauds in Indi India have gone higher than ever. Age frauds in India have existed from the last 30 to 40 years, but it is high time that athletes realize and play in their own age group. I have seen a lot of young and talented athletes quit professional playing because of this challenge. If a committee like WADA, which is the World Anti-Doping Agency, could be set similarly for the age fraud issue, maybe we would be able to preserve a lot of young and talented athletes who would later on bring laurels for us. Number two, financial security of an athlete. An athlete's life, on an average, is very short. Probably 10 years, if all goes well. From a mindset of an athlete, the only ambition is to play for the nation. There is no other, um, no other motivation and inspiration for an athlete other than this one expression, that is India. In a country of 1.3 billion with the third highest level of unicorn companies in the world, we do not have shortage of funds for an athlete. But what we do have is a shortage of a mindset to sponsor an upcoming athlete. We are in our golden era where we can produce the best only if the financial security of an athlete is taken care of. Then and only then will the athletes be able to be free and focus and perform. Number three, building an Indian style of training and playing. This year, for the first time ever, we were able to win the Thomas and Uber Cup. The Thomas Cup. I believe, with all due respect, I believe we won it this time because somewhere we believed in our styles and we believed in ourselves. All previous years, we drew and borrowed from various Asian and European countries and in the process, lost our own style. Europeans are generally tall and strong, which helps them to play with a certain style. Asians have a natural spring in their bodies, which helps them to perform in a certain way. Indians are a mixture of both. It is time we capitalize on our own style. It is time we find out our own style. All previous years, we have invested on getting trained from professionals from other countries. Now is the time to bring our own styles. In the singles event, we have been able to establish our supremacy, while in the doubles, we are on the verge of becoming the world's best. The day is not far. Ladies and gentlemen, let us, let us bring, the joy, bring the joy of this sport, Puna game, and take up the ownership of this sport. Let us bring more laurels to the land where it all began. Jai Hind!